Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the OpenTX firmware on the Jumper T12 radio. That includes the original T12, the T12 Plus, and this version here, the T12 Pro. First thing you're going to want to do is go to the OpenTX website and download OpenTX 2.3.5 Companion and install that on your computer. I'll have a link in the description to go to where you can download that. So after you've installed OpenTX Companion, you want to set up a new radio profile for the Jumper T12, and this is officially supported by the OpenTX project, so it will show up there um, uh, in, the down, um, in the drop down menu. So create a new radio profile, you can call whatever you want, um, and then select Jumper T12. And when you set up this profile, the most important thing you want to do, especially uh, for the uh, T12 Pro, is you want to uh, select the internal module option. Uh, otherwise, uh, you, when you flash the radio, uh, the internal module won't be supported. So once you've completed the profile setting, uh, you want to download the firmware. So click the download button and then you get this dialog. In this example, I've uh, checked for updates. I probably want to do that once in a while, see if there's any new versions out there. And then go ahead and click the download button and save that file on your computer somewhere. Next thing you want to do is uh, download the SD card contents. That usually has like the sound files and other things, like scripts and things that you want to download to the SD card. And that should download the matching version that will match the firmware that you just downloaded. Now there are different approaches to actually up updating the firmware on the radio itself. What, I'm, what I've done is uh, I've actually saved the files to a micro SD card that you can put into the bottom of the radio here. Um, so, for example, the SD card contents, you want to unzip that and save all that to the root of your micro SD card on the computer. Uh, I'm using a, I think I'm using a 4 gigabyte micro SD card. I think you can use something as small as 1 gigabyte. Um, but yeah, it is a little bit picky as to what you can use. So you probably want to use a high quality card, at least that's a class 10. And I think you can use up to a 16 gigabyte card without any issues. So what I did is I actually saved all the files from the unzipped SD card contents to the micro SD card. And then inside there, you're going to see a folder called firmware. And then I took the firmware file that I downloaded uh, in the first part of the video, and I put that into the firmware folder on the micro SD card. So once you've transferred all the files over to the micro SD card, you want to go ahead and put it into your radio. And it's going to go right there in the bottom. And at this point, you want to go ahead and turn on the radio in bootloader mode. Uh, you're going to push, push both these trim buttons here on the bottom in. So they're going to go in towards the center. And then you're going to tap the power button and then it'll launch the radio in bootloader mode. And it's a, kind of hard to see. It's a low contrast screen in this setting here in bootloader mode. But you can see uh, you have different options here. Right firmware, restore EEPROM. This is standard. Um, for OpenTX. And you can see I'm already on the current firmware T12.235, but if you click on right firmware and hit enter, this will be in, it'll show you what files are inside um, that firmware folder, and I have here OpenTX T12 internal multi as the file that I downloaded. And then if you actually select that, it will go ahead and write the firmware, and then it will, at the, when it's done, it'll reboot the, actually it'll You'll actually end, uh, exit out of the writing of the firmware process and you'll get back to this menu here and then you want to go ahead and hit exit and, Welcome then, to Open TX. and then it will boot back into the radio. So that is it for ter in terms of updating the OpenTX firmware. Um, uh, in the next video I'm going to show you how to actually update the firmware of the multi-protocol module because if you are on 234 like I was on um, and you go to 235, the internal uh, multi protocol modules on uh, 1.3.0.44, and it will give you a warning to tell you that you, you're, an upgrade of that is uh, recommended, and it'll keep flashing on that little part of the screen uh, in the model menu. So uh, you want to go ahead, and if you go to 235, you want to go up to 1.3.0.53, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video.